Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful, soft landscape. We're going to focus on the light. It should be fun. And if you're enjoying these and you'd like to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. We'll start today here with our two inch brush in a soft purple color. All right, and I've also applied just a little bit of clear gel and white to the top of the canvas like we always do. And if you need that stuff, it's available on our website. If you haven't tried it yet, go try it because it really makes a big difference when you go to blend colors. And unlike other mediums that you might be used to, this clear gel is almost more sticky when it's on the canvas. That's the best way to describe it. You kind of just have to try it and see what I mean. But it helps to pull the paint off in such a way that blends really nice, but it doesn't leave you out of control and it makes painting easier. I'm just going to tell you, you can do it without, but it sure does make it easier. Don't you want every advantage? I know I do. Well, anyway, we're just going to drop in this color and you notice we don't really use this color a lot for the sky. It's a very purpley purple, <laughs> not something we usually use for the sky, but I think it'll be pretty today. So we'll see. And maybe as we go to the left, I might just sneak in. Sorry about my kind of messy palette. You know how it goes. Kind of hard to, it's just getting old. This palette needs to be changed pretty soon. I might just add a little yellow to this color just to warm it up on this side. Now you can see I'm loading up here with a little bit of green. Let's just start working on our background trees. I put a little water in there with the same colors. And actually tell you what, Let's go ahead and maybe draw in a couple of tree trunks while we're going. Just a few right out like that. And we'll just do a couple more, just strokes of color to create little tiny distant background trees. And I'll show you something really cool that we can do with these trees. If you want, we can, let me get a little more going before I do. There, see, I put a little more purple in there. I just thought that would look nice. Oh, yeah. Great. It's very, very impressionistic here. You don't get points for neatness yet. <laughs> there. That looks good. But let me show you something cool you can do. You can just take a detail round brush, grab a little white, grab a tinge of yellow, but mostly white. And watch this. I love this sort of thing. Just maybe wipe a little bit out of the brush. But just right, right on either side of our make that a little brighter right on either side of our tree trunk here see that just something like this it doesn't have to be anything perfect just like like that and then you just wipe your brush out and then feather that just by touching it and you create these little sunspots glowing through the background trees how cool is that oh yeah gotta do those fun things mm. subtle but kind of fun so feel free to do these you know, you can develop a tree trunk where there was none. And really it just helps you really get a nice professional looking effect here when you do this sort of thing. So maybe try playing around with this. Now let's create a lot of mist back here. This is a, a painting that needs it, I think. So I got my little blender brush and I was using just white, but I tell you what, let's go with a touch of our yellow and white. I think that'll just be nicer. Oh yeah, it is nicer. So I have a little bit of both, I guess. There, and just really just turn it in circles, you know. Kind of wind your way around this painting. That looks pretty good. There, it creates that nice depth. And honestly, you can you can maybe just take a little touch of purple. Yeah, let's do some purple mist. See, you don't want to just go one dead color on your mist. You want a lot of colors. There. So we got a little purple. That was not something I was planning to do, but I think it's something that's worth doing. So there's your purple mist. Float that in and around. Oh yeah. Bring that up. This is just, this is a nice little brush. It gets the job done pretty quick. It's a decent size, very manageable size. I like it a lot. It's a good little blender brush. So you see, we don't, we don't spend too long on the details here in the background because you end up losing quite a few of them. And then what we'll do is we'll build out more trees in front of this. And you may just say, well, here, I'll take that one and I'll pick it out and I'll bring it forward with darks. But this way we have a soft background and then you can bring your, your darker trees over top. So, you know, you kind of don't spend a whole bunch of time on this step. You just, you just get it in and then you can you know, kind of build on top. So let me stick that brush right there. Let me just show you real quick. 
just grab a slightly darker color of the same tones and just pick this one out, for instance, and make it come forward. So you drop that tree trunk down, you add a few darker bits to the center. Maybe they have a feeling green. Yes. And that's the way you can, we're going to build depth in our background today. And we're going to come forward doing that over and over again until we kind of make it to, you know, it looks like we're kind of in the foreground. Leave plenty of the light showing so we can put our dark, almost black ones right over top and get some contrast. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop in a tree up here. You can see it took just two or three seconds and I started to close our forest in around. But then I decided, well, wait, before I get ahead of myself here, I want to drop this tree in. This is a tree that I've been planning to help kind of, I don't know, add a little extra detail to this painting. Add a little extra something here. And it's not going to be as dark as possible. I've actually got a lot of paint in the background for me. So you can see I started out almost black and it turned and it turned kind of light. That's not normal. I just guess I was getting careless. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You could easily wipe down this background if you think it's going to be an issue. I don't think it's going to be an issue. And I may wipe it down in other areas where I need to. So let me also take a limb off this side and have it come over and oh, down. <laughs> yes, like that. Isn't that cool? All right. And we'll just keep painting. And this is important to get done before we close our forest in because then we can kind of figure out where we want to leave some openings of sky, negative space showing through. But that looks pretty good. I think I might thicken this branch up and thicken the bottom of that tree up. Oh, that's nicer. Look at those big roots. And that's what we're looking for. It's kind of this almost, I don't know, kind of a crazy old forest. I don't know. Cool forest. Something with a lot of interesting old trees. Uh, let's see, right over here, it, it kind of depends on how far you want to go, but maybe just right here. Look at this started. I probably end up covering that particular tree, but I, would, I did want a big tree leaning in. Yes. Good. That's going to be an evergreen. And then I will have a big one here. I'm just going to add it later. I'm not going to do it right now. Let's go ahead and sketch in while we're going here. I'm going to sketch in a little bit of, well, there's about halfway, so maybe a little under. There we go. A little bit of a water um, stopping area. There we go. And then maybe raise up some more. Oh, yeah, actually, let's do, let's do maybe a, a cliff or something right there. Something extra. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe a, another rock cliff right there. Oh, that's cool. So we'll have that river kind of snake around that. <laughs> Love it. See my sketching? It's kind of fun to get to sketch with you guys. I don't usually do that. Cool. Now, maybe we can, while we're going, let me just add in a couple more dark ones. Real dark. You know what? I've had it. <laughs> I'm going to wipe the canvas and then keep going. So it gives you a really good idea of Look at how I do stuff. Wipe that area, set down that paper towel, watch the difference. See how it's dark all the way? See these little holes? You get these like textured holes almost like the canvas is dry because it is pretty dry. We took a lot of the slippery paint off. That's how you can tell. You get the right amount of paint on the canvas. Cool. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop in some large rocks down here. I'm just going to block them in with a little bit of dark and I'm going to spread this dark really far. So there's not much paint on the canvas that makes our detail work so much easier. And we'll probably wipe this off with a paper towel. Now I want these rocks, so there's about center. I, I think I want these rocks all the way out. Oh goodness, let's have them way past center. There we go. The reason is I think that it will look, I don't know, more interesting that way and kind of make them harsh. There we go. Harsh and kind of geometric shapes. Does that make sense? Not, not too... Um, you know, not too soft, very sharp rocks. Good. All right. Make that nice and dark. Oh, there we go. That helps. And then actually I want to add some, we'll need to squirt out some more red, but add a little red in there. Good. I'll add some more when I squirt some more out. And then just cover this area with dark. We're gonna have large plants and stuff in here. 
So it's good to get this covered right now. You see, I just put in our dark reflections, anticipating that, look, the dark's going around. It helps to pre-plan. It really does. Good. We're gonna have probably two more trees, a nice big one there, and then another one kind of cutting across like this. There, now I went ahead and put in a couple of trees. I put one there and there. You're just finishing up, kind of making a nice large root on this one. That's very nice. It'll make it look kind of strong. I just think interesting. I spent the last few minutes sort of darkening up some areas, adding extra limbs, and just kind of getting it ready for the highlight phase which we're gonna do now. So let me grab just a little bit of yellow, white, and honestly at this point, you can kind of just grab whatever mud is laying around. And I'm gonna just, well actually, speaking of mud, maybe I'll grab a little brown and throw in with that. It's a little, I don't know, too light. A little too, well not even that is too light. It's just got a little too much yellow. There you see the difference. And my, my tree color actually has some green in it because of all the leaves around it and stuff, so it's not perfectly brown. So when it mixes, it's maybe not the most ideal situation. But sometimes you get that when you paint a lot. Sometimes you run into these little areas. Or sometimes when you don't paint much, I guess it doesn't matter. You run into these little areas. Sometimes your colors underneath are not perfect. So when that happens, just make sure you, you reload a little more. And that way you'll get a nice clean effect and you won't have any muddy areas. Now I just got done smooshing a little bit of light color here on the rocks and that was quick and easy. And here's the fun part. I'm gonna take my detail around and look at all that paint that I've got on here because this is the final highlight. You can, I'm gonna say it, you can glop it on thick. Uh, when do you hear me say that? Well, it's all right at the very end when you know it's gonna be your final highlight. I'm just gonna throw this out there though. This is pretty much it. Once you glop it on thick, then you gotta pretty much just take a paper towel and wipe it off if you need to make any big changes to it. Otherwise it just turns to mud, you know, it's worth that extra second. So glop it on and then kind of wipe your brush off and then do just like I'm doing here and blend it around a little. The more you tap it, the more it mushes in and goes away. So there you go. This is an accent highlight and it just helps to set the whole area off, you know, a little highlight kind of sparkling through the trees. And because it is the wooded area, you know, kind of the forest, uh, you can really get away with more kind of a spotty highlight and that's cool. It kind of gives you that look of light filtering through the trees. If this was an open field, you'd probably want it more consistent. There, a little bit of moss or just grass doesn't hurt either. Now we're gonna go ahead and drop in some grass on this side. I've got my fan brush out. There. This will help to kind of tie the painting together left and right. We spend a lot more time on the left side than the right side. So I'm gonna try to make up for that right here. <laughs> there you go. So you see, we don't wanna just come across, and you, you know, this is something that's worth mentioning. Come across and just cut a straight line because I do that sometimes by mistake. So what you wanna do instead is see, bring your grass up a little. I mean, sometimes you want it straighter than others, but you never just wanna to, to draw a line. You know what I mean? With the grass, cause it's an easy mistake to make. So this way we'll have some extra things happening. A little bit of movement to the grass. Some of it kind of grows over the, the uh, edge there. Very important that you get those little variations in there. See that? You can just drop some of it right over the edge. Cool. A little bit brighter maybe. Yeah, there we go. Just do a couple of light light little ones. There. Not much paint on this side. Makes it easy. Now I'm going to go ahead and use our liner brush to drop in some great little, you know, tree branches and stuff. It actually looks a touch dark, so I will lighten it up. One thing that I used to do for the longest time was use just black for my tree limbs or just brown, really dark, you know. Well, now what I do is I use something that's quite a bit lighter because generally when you paint, you're, you're, well, all the time pretty much, your paint will mix and become, you know, lighter. Very rarely does it stay just about the same. So in this case, see, I put, we started off with a nice dark color, but it got lighter because of the wet underpainting. So we have to compensate when we paint our little limbs in because these don't mix because they're so thin. They just 
slide on top. They don't really, I think they'll mix if you touch them again, but if you don't, they should stay just about the same. So there you go. So we kind of compensate for that. It's subtle, but something that just, you know, worth mentioning. And you can, you can either bother with it or not. Either way, you'll still get a nice painting. There we go. And I know I'm doing these before my final highlights. Number one, this is a darker painting. I really don't care if some of my highlights get muddy. That's number one. Number two, I'd like to put a lot of focus on the limbs, more focus on the limbs than the leaves because I want that contrast. See how that's working out right in there? So that's the reasoning behind my doing it a little bit out of order. Cool. You can kind of go slow. Actually, let's go down here. Get a couple that just, oh, there we go. So nice against that light. Lots and lots of contrast with these. Now, really one of the last things that we're gonna do up here today is I got my detail round, which of course is softer, and I've got a lot of black paint, just black. And I'm going to glop a few darks up all the way along the top, and maybe down the left and right side. What this is gonna do is, A, it's gonna darken everything else, but more importantly, it's going to almost make you feel like you have to kind of duck down a little to look under and through the trees. Kind of a um, more interesting landscape effect versus just, oh, there the trees are all the way up. I hope that makes sense. So I'm gonna do this a little bit slowly. I mean, you could get in here and have this done in three seconds if you want to. I'm gonna do it fairly slowly because I don't wanna overdo and have to repaint the background over this. It would be you'd probably end up having to wipe it off with a paper towel and go back to kind of some, you know, you'd end up back with kind of some gray greens and you have to build on top of that, which is fine. But I'd rather just take an extra minute here and do it right the first time. Anyway, we'll kind of work these all the way across. I would actually be very interested in kind of getting some, yeah, some darks right there. Oh yes. See why we didn't really worry too much? I just did highlights really quick. Nothing to those. And honestly, they're a little bit muddy in some areas and that's fine. Oh yeah, these dark ones though, to me make the painting. It's a different painting. It's not normal. There, it's a little darker than normal. That looks good though, doesn't it? All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.